Right, I'm having a bit of fun. Um, just to give him credit, we're watching uh, Damien Maguire's. Oh, no, that's before that. That's one of mine. Uh, where are we at? Yeah, so this is his inverter teardown. Bit of a plug somewhere there. You see and where he's taking it apart. PCB CAD okay. package, something like that. Let's stop there. <clears throat> so basically, he's kind of started taking it apart and he got to the point where we're digging out a transistor which is which is fine so here we have one which has seen better days no i did not spray it black <laughs> and there's a capacitor and what's actually happened is one of the bolts basically has got welded to it because it arced internally and you can see the carnage there uh, but what i have found on this side here is that there's actually an igbt which has blown and what happened probably is that that started the whole thing and this finished it off over here. I'm not quite sure it's like that. None of the other transistors look physically damaged apart from that one. And I think, in actual fact, that one might be okay, but I don't think so. No, I can actually see, you can see through it, you can see some, some parts of it exposed, possibly, I don't know. But that one's definitely blown, and I think that's probably the start of the whole chain of events, basically. Um, yeah. Uh, the reason why this one blew is because I used an aftermarket um, gate driver circuit which doesn't detect. Uh, I don't think it detects in the same way as the, the original gate driver does uh, any uh, kind of faults or anything like that where it detects the voltage across the IGBTs because the on voltage, the, when it's turned on there is actually a, an actual voltage across them. It's low, it's like between 1 and 2 volts. And so if you can pick that up, then you know it's not short-circuited, because if it was short-circuited, it'd be zero. And you put into intelligent gate driver circuit stuff, so you can pick that up, so you can detect. Because if you detect the uh, that voltage dropping to zero, you know the thing's gone short-circuit, and what I would tend to do would be throw the main breaker. Um, but we didn't. And so I basically was going through these transistors, just <coughs> we've got the bars off, which is basically what happened in Damien's video just to lift these things up and all I've done basically is stuck a screwdriver under them just to try and lift them clear of the actual heatsink uh, looks like we've got heatsink paste in there that's probably what that white is um, and it's just to get that off just to separate it now we've got a row of so it's one two there's eight sixty there's eight there and plus another eight there and these are the same so these are all now I can't remember which way around it is, but basically they're all like high side, let's say. And then there's the ones that are actually underneath the bus bar, which are the low side. Or it'll be the ones under the bus bar that's low side, and these ones are the high side, something like that. Because they're arranged, these, these are mirrored pairs, basically, high and low. Um, so what I'm trying to do is to get to the point where I can, because what I want to do is get all this off and clean it off and then use the heat sink for my new one. Because basically all of this stuff here, all these... Uh, so there's two rows of eight there, that's 16, plus there's another two rows underneath, right? So that's 32. So you've got 32 IGBTs here, and you've got the uh, gate resistors, basically. Now, um, Damien says that there's there's like t there's a 10 ohm, there's two 10 ohm resistors, but his arrangement, he's got that wrong. Um, what it is, basically, is they have two 10 ohm resistors in parallel, sorry, two 20 ohm resistors in parallel for the gate circuit right and these all tie back through to the gate driver right so each one has basically two 20s in parallel which makes it 10 ohm so all of them have got 10 ohm gate resistors effectively which then tie back to the igbt uh, the gate driver board so you've got eight there plus another eight there that's 16 and each one's got a gate on it so that's 16 effectively you've got 16 resistors in parallel 16 10 ohm resistors in parallel Right, which amounts to obviously less than an ohm uh, in total, if you like. Um, they're not in parallel because they're connected to separate gates, but they may as well be. If you had a single large IGBT, they would be all in parallel, and that's how much load there is on the uh, gate driver board. Now, what I'm trying to say is, is you've got eight sixteen there. These are seventy five amp IGBTs, right? And I am actually replacing them with uh, these now this here right so that's three half bridges okay for three phases 
right? What we're looking at there is just for one phase, right? There's two more of these units for the other two phases, okay? And so one of those half bridges, that circuit there, replaces that entire unit. Now it doesn't because there, those are 1200 amp in total, whereas one of these is 600 amps. But you can see basically two of those together is 1200 amps. This is the high, this is the high temperature um, uh, current that I'm quoting, not the low temperature one. So these really can handle um, the 600 amps at high at, at 100 degrees or wherever it is. Okay. And <clears throat> so basically, uh, two of these, these are half bridges, so you need two half bridges in parallel, basically. So basically, one of those is the equivalent of one side of this, the 16 plus 60, uh, sorry, 8 plus 8, because that's like low side and high side, or, or low side and high side, whichever way around it is. And all of that section there is replaced by one of those, you see. And the way I'm going to do it basically is I'll take two of those, two half bridges, and put them on here for this heat sink, and that will then replace the whole array. You see? Now I could have done it another way around. What I could have done, because I actually have got these things here, right, which are going back to Farnell because these are the wrong ones, and I thought these were half bridges, so they're not. They're common emitters, right? So you've got basically two IGBTs there that share, share one emitter and got two collectors. No idea why that's useful, but there you go. So what you could do then is you could just simply have one there and one there, and that will be, you'd use one for the low side and one for the high side, and just use them in common meter. However, these, they quote them 600 amps, but it's 600 amps for the whole unit, 300 amps per transistor, so these are useless. <laughs> well, they're not useless, obviously, but I'm sure they are used for something, but not for this purpose. Yeah. Uh, so I will get into that and I will dig out the uh, the whole array and separate it out and I'll show how to do that. I've tried prizing it up but obviously we've got all this goo that's holding things in. Incidentally, um, I did get it all over my fingers but you can see I've cleaned them off with just washing up liquid. So I'm thinking this stuff perhaps just breaks down with washing up liquid. So you could soak this in uh, in a bath of washing up liquid and maybe it would then dissolve all the goo you'd have to have a significant amount of water though because otherwise it'd set the whole thing and be just solid goo just in a small estate uh, in, in less so I don't know um, I might try and just bathe this in washing up liquid I have obviously got two more of these because they come in threes um, the other ones are in better condition than this uh, this one's taken a real beating because this is the one that actually arc the other two are okay um, you can see here where the nut got welded completely, so it arced from there basically to one of the bus bars, I believe. Uh, it's probably the output one, because this is across the uh, the positive and the negative. You see, these this is across the rail, and um, then you've got the output one, which looks like it comes across the top, basically. I don't know, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, but this is a laminated um, um, bus bar, so you have basically you got positive, negative and output in the three laminations, you see, so yeah, you know what I mean, and that's possibly part of the reason, because you can see they're all paired up there, can't you, the laminations are actually exposed, because it went through them all, yeah, yeah, that was a bugger, um, whereas if you're using something like this, the uh, transistors are actually all separated out, in fact you can, you can pop the case off the top of this, and you can see the IGBTs which are laid out, and they're all spread out, and the, the bars are all spread out inside them as well. And this is the output side, and then you've got the positive and negative on the input side. So you could <laughs> literally just place one of those like there, <laughs> not the other way around sort of thing. You've got your output, and you've got your positive and negative here. You see, so I don't know, I'm not quite sure. I'm really, all, all I want is, I want all that cleared off so I can actually use that as a heat sink, basically. And get those bolted on like as well. It's already there. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, you know, and, and there's a, a secondary effect. You could actually hook this up to the gate driver board. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't, if you can't hook this up to the gate driver board and actually have it. If you could have one half bridge there and the other half bridge there, and then have the outputs coming across the gate driver board, so you could replace this whole array. Now they are more expensive. Uh, these devices are 
um, 180 pounds each, so that's going to be over 200 euros each, right? And to replace this, you need two of them each. Uh, you need six basically in total, which basically cost me about a grand, something like that. No, it's 1200, 1200, something like that. It's less because it's not. Um, so, yes, and these things are, I found them online and they're about £4 each. And so you times that by 32, that's uh, £6,428, isn't it? So that's £128 worth of transistors, whereas that's a grand worth. But those are far better for this task because those, they are actually designed for 1200 volts, I think. Uh, 1.2 kilovolts. And the heat sink on the underside of it is isolated from the transistors, where in this one, I, uh, I don't think, it, well, they might be, I don't know, I'm not sure. I think these have got uh, little films on them to separate them from the heat sink, I don't know, I'm not sure. Or maybe they just, I don't know, I'm not sure. But anyway, we'll delve into this. Uh, but it's like nearly nine o'clock now, so I'm going to stop, I think, clean up. I might, I might just chuck this in a bucket of um, washing up liquid. I'd, this is gone. As far as I'm concerned, even if some of these transistors work, I'm not going to be using them. Um, all I really want this for is just the heat sink, so it doesn't matter if things get destroyed. And the capacitors, because they're not cheap, them things. That's a 400 microfarad capacitor. Freaking huge, though, if you think about it. That's a film capacitor, right? And look at the size of that. And if you compare it with this, which is an electrolytic, which is actually, um, I think you can see it there is uh, 2,700 microfarad, right? So uh, that's a 400, uh, seven pores of 28. So that's seven times the capacitance, roughly, of that. Same voltage, but seven times the capacitance, and it's half the size. You know, that's the reason why people use electrolytics, because they're small, very, very small. Physically, uh, um, film capacitors are physically large, basically. Um, but um, film capacitors are the ones that can handle the transient voltages where electrolytics have, they're not as good and they're slower switching as well so they don't catch some of the peaks on electrolytics because very often you put um, an electrolytic and you have a film capacitor across it to catch the high, high frequency stuff and that, that handles the low frequency, I don't know anyway and they came out of a Prius actually, I've got a bunch of them up there so I've got three of these, I might as well use them. Um, and I should be able to fit the half bridge to the side of it as well. So I'm going to have a half bridge, sorry. So I'm going to have a half bridge, and then the capacitor, and then another half bridge there. It should fit quite well. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for tonight.